Hi everybody, I'm Stefan for Touch Plus and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to shatter parametric objects in Cinema 4D. So let's get started. First of all, let's create a cube object and after that let's go to the deformers tab and we are going to drop in our scene the shutter deformer. So let's click on it. And as you can see, the shutter deformer is pretty simple one. We have only four settings here. And in order to make the shutter deformer works, we need to make it a child of the object that we need to deform. So let's make it a child of the cube object. And let's select the cube and increase the number of segments to 5 by 5 by 5 just to have some polygons to work with and let's select the shutter deformer and as we increase the strength you can see what happens and if we set the strength to 25 for example let's see the angle speed what it does if we set it to 0 it basically controls the random rotation of the polygons if we set the randomness to 0 as well it controls the random position of the polygons so if you want to add a randomness to the polygons of the object you need to increase the angle speed and the randomness the last option we have here the end size is basically as you can see the polygons shutter and disappear and if we set the end size to 1 the polygons are going to maintain their original size so they shutter and fall apart and they maintain their original size we can set this to 5 for example and the end size is going to increase for the purpose I'm going to use the shutter deformer in this tutorial I'm going to set this one to 0 and let's set this one to 0 as well and basically what the shutter deformer is going to do for us it's going to tell Cinema 4D that this cube is made out of polygons which we want to shutter and recognize as separate objects so we need to select the shutter and set it to 0.5 for example and as you can see what happens we have some gaps between the polygons so we need to decrease the strength to 0.1 and we can still see the gaps between the different polygons so we are going to set this to 0 0.01 and if we do a render we don't see anything but it still it's going to work so let's zoom out a bit let's drop a 4 object in our scene and move it down like so and now we need to select our 4 object right click go to simulation tags and apply collider body tag and select the cube object right click go to simulation tags again and apply rigid body tag if we go to the beginning of the timeline and select the cube and play the animation you can see what happens it doesn't shatter into polygons as we expect that's because we need to do some modifications first of all let's select the shutter and move it down because if you move it up you can see how it affects the cube object so we need to move it down like so and let's create a white material for the floor and let's create a another material for the cube for example a white blue color and let's drop it on the cube object and what we need to do now is to select the cube go to MoGraph, hold down ALT and click on Fracture and this is going to make the cube a child of the Fracture object we need to select the Fracture object go to Mode and change it from straight to export segments and connect once we do that and play back the animation you can see what happens Cinema 4D recognizes the polygons of this cube object 
as a separate object and they shutter as we expect now. The only problem is that they are pretty flat as you can see they don't have any 3D volume or thickness so how to solve this problem the solution I found is we need to go to simulate quad and apply quad surface and drop it into our scene after that we need to select the fracture object and make it a child of the quad surface object and when we select the quad surface object we have thickness that we can set to 5 for example and as you can see this gives a thickness of the pieces of our cube object so if you go to the beginning you're going to see that this creates a problem for our cube as you can see it creates this thickness and it doesn't look like a cube object that we had before so if we turn off the quad surface that's how the cube object looks and if we set this to on again you can see that the quad surface takes the cube object and extrude each side outwards so how to solve the problem you can decrease the thickness to one but as you can see we still can see the extrusion and what I found works best is to find the moment before the cube is going to fall on the ground so let's see around frame twenty four so let's go to frame twenty three set a keyframe for the thickness and set it to zero move one frame forward to frame 24 or even two frames to frame 25 and set the thickness to 2 for example and set a keyframe and as you can see the cube looks perfect now and the animation happens so fast that you can't tell we have some animation on the thickness of the pieces and is pretty low thickness let's set it to 5 and zoom out and play back the animation once again as you can see this works pretty good and that's it how to shutter parametric objects in Cinema 4D now let's make some tests and instead of cube object let's use a cone for example so let's remove the cube object and delete it and make the cone child of the fracture object and make the shutter child of the cone object and as you can see once we do that we have some issues here and that's the biggest downside of uh, using this way to shatter the objects because it doesn't work very well with round objects now we need just to select the cone object and right click go to simulation tags and apply rigid body tag and let's apply the boom material to the cone again and if we zoom in you can see it breaks into pieces and uh, for the different objects you need to tweak the rigid body tags to achieve the animation you're going for because this one as you can see it's pretty crazy right now and let's change the cone object with another for example let's see if we use a sphere object let's drop the sphere underneath the fracture object and make the shutter child of the sphere let's apply a rigid body tag to the sphere and set the material and as you can see we clearly see some polygons here and if we play the animation it's going to work as expected 
but there is a problem with seeing the polygons that way. What you can do to avoid this problem is you can turn off the shutter and render the animation as the sphere falls on the ground. For example, render the animation from frame 1 to frame 40 and after that render the animation from frame let's see from frame 20 to the end with the shutter object enabled and you can transition this in post production in After Effects for example the transition between the normal sphere and the sphere that is going to shutter because as you can see right now we can't just keyframe the strength of the shutter for example let's go to frame 24 and let's set a keyframe for the strength of the shutter let's move two frames backwards and set the strength to zero and set a keyframe and let's go to the beginning of the timeline and if we play back the animation you can see what happens for some reason it doesn't work so we can't solve the problem that way and the only thing I came up is this transition where you render two different passes and combine them in compositing it's the same for all other objects for example it works pretty good with polygon objects like the cube and the platonic the pyramid object so let's drop a platonic object in our scene and let's remove the sphere object and select the platonic increase the number of segments to 4 for example and let's drop it underneath the fracture and make the shutter a child of the platonic and let's select the platonic right click and go to simulation tags and apply rigid body tag again and apply the material so as you can see we forgot to remove the keyframes on the shutter object so let's select the first keyframe and just delete it and right now it should work perfect as you can see and that's it you can use a number of other objects but take in mind that if you increase the polygons a lot for example like if we set this to 10 and try to animate it it's going to be very heavy and as you can see sometimes you need to turn off the shutter deformer and turn it on and if we play back you can see what happens it doesn't work sometimes so you have to keep the number of polygons relatively low in order to be able to perform this simulation so that's it hope you like this tutorial and find it useful once again I'm Stefan for Tuts Plus and we'll see you next time